Okay, this is what they asked me, and I had 20 minutes, so I, I think I have five points. I have no proper points, but I have five points. And uh, I hope I get uh, some of the messages across to you. So the first point is that the difference between uh, sort of economics, the way economists would consider, or more uh, people working in academia uh, compared to journalists, they will be interested in, in the pattern, in, in, the, in the system of the madness, so to speak, and interested in, not in one specific case, but the on average cases, if you like. And I think that uh, maybe that uh, some investigative uh, journalists also could benefit somewhat from having that kind of uh, uh, information as a background. And I think they have, uh, or I think you have. Um, but so I'm going to just remind you what I would have sort of had in mind for these PPP, power, poverty, and uh, paradises. So I think about sort of theories in this uh, connection, basically as a, a map of the tubes, the, the collective transportation that you have in, in most of the... Th they are completely unrealistic, but they are extremely useful. If you're going to find a way in the tube system in London, you can't do without these maps. But you can't use them for the many other things you can't use them for. You can't run after them, for example. I think that is completely impossible. But you can use them for exactly what they are designed for. And this is what I'm going to uh, would like you to keep in mind that 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 it is not uh, it it is when we at least what I can explain in 20 minutes. I think uh, it can be useful to use more of these kinds of road maps or transportation schemes that you find on the tubes uh, as a guide to to uh, to the investigations. I think uh, investigative journalism is at its best when it have pure cases. But I think pure cases enlightened or guided by the general, maybe, cases that may be wrong, but, but uh, these cases can be a confirmation or a contradiction of. That is, I think, uh, useful both for the work, I hope, uh, and, and I think at least as a reader, I will, I will benefit from. That was the first point. The second point is, um, uh, that I'm going to warn against something that very often comes up uh, when you talk about these things that we are discussing here. It is just as if, if you removed corruption, if you removed the tax paradises, if you removed illegal activities, then the development of the world would be fine. Uh, everybody agrees that this isn't the case. But we have to remind each other, because when we have this focus on corruption and on illegal activities, we too easily <laughs> forget that even without that, there are some basic, deep unfairness and inefficiencies uh, uh, in the world. But from a development perspective that uh, I normally, I hope to take uh, normally, I think the basic uh, problem in the world uh, in one sentence, is that a lot of poverty is completely unnecessary. It, it shouldn't be there. Uh, but the mechanism that challenge resources, abilities to get out of poverty, they don't flow where the problem is largest. It flows to the places where it, it isn't needed so much, where we have more or enough of it from beforehand. There are many variants of what I've just said. For example, the capital doesn't flow to, to poor countries. That uh, welfare state arrangement uh, is least developed where it's most needed. And there are many versions of exactly uh, the story that I'm, I'm telling. But, th but this is the basic problem. And this is the basic problem that all these illegal activities, all the tax havens or whatever, work on pawn and I think strengthen. So they, they, they are working on a bad structure initially, and they, they strengthen it. So one example, and that is more an illustration that you can think of. Think about colonial countries that were uh, occupied by colonial powers. What, what did the colonial powers do? Uh, what did they do when they came to the country? 
w many people had, uh, I guess, uh, in mind that they, oh, where well they would invest a lot and exploit opportunities. Uh, but exactly what they didn't do, they, they blocked these opportunities. Why was that? Because the colonial powers could earn more by restricting the use of capital in the country. Because by doing that, wages were low in the country and they could plunder the country more efficiently by doing that. And investing the capital elsewhere, also the capital they get out of this process of plundering the colonies. So this was what was happening. Uh, and think here, you got if the flow of capital went the wrong way under colonial rule. Uh, the richness of the colonial power became as a result of the poverty of the big masses living in these countries. And the richer the colonial powers became, the poorer or the more difficult it was for the, for the, for the poor to live uh, in these colonies to get out of poverty. In many cases, under after independence in the 1960s and uh, early on for some countries and later on for others, many new, uh, how should you say, uh, non-colonial powers imitated that policy. And it is, it, people are... Uh, People are not rude according whether to the country of origin. They are rude because it gives them power, it gives them possibilities to exploit these opportunities. At least countries both in Latin America and, and in Asia and in uh, maybe the easiest to find examples in Africa, they were ruled by they were ruled by um, by uh, uh, an elite that enriched themselves in a very similar manner to what the colonial powers had did. And they also enriched themselves by keeping m most people down. It was also a, 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 a condition for maintaining the power in many cases. Zimbabwe is an unfortunate example, I've been there many, many times. Arv is here, I think he can confirm similar story from many other countries, Mozambique, for example. Um, so <coughs> they also, the new governments also inherited institutions of the old. You can see the impact of the old institutions. Uh, not in all, there are some countries that are breaking away from this, uh, more, more so recently than, than before. But it is important to have this as a background, that it is what makes the ruling elite rich may be to keep uh, the poor masses poor. And uh, sometimes we forget about these things. We think it's only corruption, only crime that created. Of course, this is a crime in itself, but they have created the laws that make it legal. Um, okay, that was point number two, maybe three. I can uh, depend a little bit. So now, um, so tax heavens. Let's just add just that upon. I will talk a little bit about thieves and criminals in the countries, but, but tax havens, they of course make this even a stronger tendency in, in most countries, because no, there are better opportunities to place the money that they suck out of the country elsewhere. And they can even make it uh, a sh uh, on, a sh on a secure place. New governments that may be better in the country can't touch it so easily. One example, obvious example, uh, Mobutu uh, Saire, he was equally rich, Mobutu the politician. Um, he was equally rich as the total debt of Saire at that time. And he had placed the, c uh, the money in tax havens all over the world. Uh, of course, he, he had to do that because maybe at one time he will be replaced and how should he then get access to it? Well, they had to be uh, secured money in tax havens. So it's not the tax issue here. It's not that he was afraid of taxes. He was afraid of t uh, that people should take it back. Russian oligarchs, after 1990 in, in, in Russia, after the revolution in 1990, then you should think that this was a, uh, that capital could flow in. There was a new government in Russia, capital would flow in. What happens? Capital flow out into tax havens for the same reason. Asset plundering in the country, placed in tax havens all over the, the world. But again, it wasn't the tax issue, it was the 
th that it was illegitimate to, to take these uh, assets and they needed the protection elsewhere in order to keep the money intact also when they got different governments uh, that wouldn't be their friends equally much as, as, as Yeltsin was. Okay, so that is one role that tax havens may, they may strengthen these things that are basically unfair in, uh, in, in, in the beginning. In addition, I would say that most, most countries, rich and poor, but it's more of a harm in poor countries than in rich countries, have what I call parasites. This, of course, is, a, is meant as a, uh, as a, it's not meant to be literally parasites. But there are people who are really, they are just sucking the blood out of good businesses, for example. They, are, they work as a sort of informal tax system. There are many ways of it. Corruption is one. Uh, there can be all, all many other ways of doing it, from uh, racketeering, protection industries, local protection industries. The, the big uh, growth industry in, in Africa for a long time was burglar bars, for example. Uh, you had all these kinds of they don't produce. They, they produce, sometimes they produce both what you need protection against and the protection itself. And these are, they are parasites. Each feel that they, they, are, they are doing, right, okay, each, each feeling that they are doing something uh, productive and, and maybe even legally. If you think here, and here's a very s brute simplification. If you think that the entrepreneurs are taken from a pool of people, they are scrupulous. They, they would like to jump into whatever activity that are open to them, as long as they can benefit from it. Then you would think that the, the return to their abilities will be the same across activities, whether they jump into uh, parasitic, parasitic uh, activities or they are producers. So lo let's just call them the thieves or the parasites and the producers. And they, uh, they are can be very easily be sort of stuck in a, in a predation trap, we call it. And that it means that they, are, they, are, they, equally, they earn equally much. One is only sucking the others or living on, the, on what the others are producing, but they do activities. They, they can do straddling, for example. They can have one foot in, 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 a, in the government and one foot in the private sector and have their own consultancy firms. For example, when you come and invest there, you have to talk to the government and then you have to first take the consultancy firm and everything that... Are there are invoices and everything looks fine for uh, all of these things, but they are just a use of that power that they have to, to take uh, resources and, and surpluses out of the activities that <coughs> come in. So on average, they have sort of the return on, on their investment are the same. So now, what think about the following. You have a, a situation where a, a country should take off. If, it, if the country take off, then the more people that sort of modernize in the country, more investment, in, uh, even in, in investment in infrastructure and so on, the benefit from investment increases. The producers, we like the, to be many producers in the country uh, because they are each other's market and they can use the services of other. So a, the more people invest in the country, the higher the, the surplus for, for each of the investors. But here we still have these straddling uh, parasites, and they return on, on, on their activities are the same. So here's uh, something of interest. What is the benefit to the thieves, the parasites in this case, would be harmful for the companies? Not so difficult to understand, but it will also be harmful for the thieves themselves. Why is that? Because when you have something that benefits the thieves, then you will, you will have more, more people from the pool of, of entrepreneurs that will go into these uh, rent-seeking activities. And when they do so, uh, they, they, uh, uh, there's less of targets to, to exploit. And when there's less targets to exploit, the profits of those who invest go down. And the, the profits, of course, for those who try to exploit these targets go down. So here's one example of tax haven improving the conditions for, for the parasites in particular, but with the consequence that they make conditions worse both for producers in the country, 
the tax in itself for having this, uh, these uh, parasites uh, going around, and uh, and um, and uh, 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 the consequences of having more people moving into these halfway illegal activities because the opportunities uh, uh, of doing. Uh, uh, hiding the money and tax savings. So th I think there's a very direct link that you enforce and strengthen these bad uh, consequences of the power structure and create, by doing that, more poverty in these uh, vulnerable countries uh, than you otherwise would have. So my last point is, is this. Many people uh, uh, try to sell the idea that we shouldn't only think about the tax aspect of, of tax havens. We should think about that it plays the role of the mafia. Why, why does it play the role of the mafia? Or how does it do it? Here is what I suggest as a um, way of thinking about it. First, what did the mafia do? The mafia did system in the underworld. Because you, in, in all businesses and transactions, you have to enforce contracts. So what, uh, but, but the criminals can't use the court system because they are criminals. They, they don't have, they, they can't say, I, I stole this first, so I should keep it. it it's a difficult say. But, the, but the, the mafia can come in. They can enforce contracts in the underworld and they can earn a lot of money by doing it. This is exactly what the tax savings do on the international scale. There are a lot of criminals, halfway criminals. Uh, there can be even be uh, uh, just uh, uh, warlords or whatever. We talked yesterday for some of those who are here. We talked a little bit about uh, warlords in Afghanistan. Uh, they, they produce 90% of the opium, illegal opium in the world. A huge values. Of course, they need. To in order to enforce these contracts, they need somebody to, to hide the money and to say that, well, this is protected and this is a deal made by others and we keep shut about it because that's the role we have. And that means that, 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 that these the role of, in particular, since they, you can hide things in, 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 the, in the paradises, um, it makes exploitation of, of the, these things more efficient with more harm both for producers and I think also for the parasites themselves as I emphasize and the big losers of course is the big broad masses that are taking away the opportunity to develop it. So this is the, the way I think I would place um, pover, poverty and these paradises into uh, development perspectives.